Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, I, I'll be talking about self-voiding walks, so let me briefly say what they are. Consider um, ZD. I can only draw Z2. self-voiding walk is, is simply a path in ZD that, that is not allowed to intersect itself. Let me show you the color here. So this is a self-voiding walk from one point that I'm going to call 0 to another point, say, say x, and of length 10 maybe. There's a number of um, interesting questions that one can ask about self-voiding walks from um, the perspective of combinatorics, probability theory, or statistical mechanics. Let me just discuss a couple <coughs> of them. From the point of view of combinatorics, uh, the most basic question you may ask is how many such walks are there, say, fixing the initial point and, say, the length of the walk. So if uh, C, T is the number of self-voiding walks from, um, say, um, 0 to an arbitrary endpoint of length t, then it's, it's it in fact, easy to see that um, there's exponenti exponentially many walks. So it's a constant nu sub c, so that ct is equal to e to the nu sub c plus um, uh, sub-exponential corrections as t goes to infinity. But it's a hard problem to understand what, what exactly these uh, sub-exponential corrections are. From the point of view of probability theory, uh, you may, may ask, um, what happens if you take a uniform nu sub c? Uh, I'll explain that later, that, that notation. It's just, so nu sub c is just a, a real number, negative. Well, just call it new if you like. <laughs> um, so um, I, I get to that in a second. It's not a negative number, it's a positive. That's right, it's a positive number. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, uh, okay. So um, uh, from the point of view of probability theory, you may want to ask if you take a uniformly chosen self voiding walk, say of a given length with a given starting point. How far, on average, is, is it going to be away from the point you started at? So um, what, is, uh, what is this distance? And, uh, so x, if x is a um, again, of from 0 to anywhere of length t, then one way to measure this is the so-called squared end-to-end -end distance, which is the expectation of, of the, of the endpoint squared. So you may ask what, what this is, and let me illustrate this in a couple of examples. So if you look at one dimension, this is a, this is a trivial question because a self-voiding walk is a straight line. It either goes left or right. So the squared end-to-end -end distance is simply t squared. Now, if you are in dimensions 5 and more, it is known that the squared end-to-end -end distance is asymptotic to a constant times t. Um, this may be, this is plausible for, for the following reasons. Um, with constant equal to 1, or t, 2d, or whatever you like, um, this is in fact the behavior of a simple random walk. That's one that's allowed to intersect. And it's also known that in, in dimensions 5 and more, simple random walks uh, typically only intersect finitely often. So it's not too surprising that the self voiding walk behaves like the simple random walk. But this is a theorem, and it's, uh, it's not easy. It's a theorem due to um, Bridges and Spencer and Hera and Slate, essentially. Okay, so I haven't talked about the most interesting dimensions two and three from the physical perspective. So self-avoiding walk is, is a very basic model for a polymer. It's a chain of molecules, and the self-avoidance constraint simply models the effect that no two molecules should be at the same location. Unfortunately, not too much is known in a mathematical sense in, uh, in dimensions two, three, two and three. It is conjectured that in dimensions 2 and 3, the squared end-to-end -end distance is asymptotic to a constant 
times t to the alpha, where alpha is strictly between 1 and 2. Um, but this is, uh, this is not known mathematical, not, not even reasonable bounds are, are known for this. Um, in two dimensions, there has been some, um, some spectacular progress in recent years using techniques of uh, conformal invariance by Schramm and Lala and Werner, who, who gave uh, very precise conjectures. But the proof is of, of this uh, question, for example, a proof for any, basically anything is, is even lacking in two dimensions. Three dimensions is wide open. In dimension four, which is um, kind of critical in this picture from the transition from the trivial behavior to the complex behavior, it is expected that there is a logarithmic corrections to the, to the behavior of the simple random walk. Now before I go on, let me briefly uh, mention that there, is a, that there is a number of variations of this model. For example, rather than asking that walks are strictly self-avoiding, you could ask that they are weakly self-avoiding, which is to say that, that you allow them to self-intersect, but now for every self-intersection you penalize you penalize uh, walks by, by, say, an exponential factor e to the minus v, which is less than 1. So then, say, the number of walks becomes a weight of walks. Um, but you can, you can ask all of these questions again. And it's not expected that any of this asymptotic behavior depends on, on such changes of the model. Uh, you can also introduce a continuous time parameterization, which is a natural thing to do, and I don't want to go into details of that. just want to mention that since what I'll be talking about now is mostly about these modifications of the model where there's a continuous time in a, in a weak interaction. <laughs> that, that is believed. It's known for dimensions 1 and 5, as, or 5 and more essentially, not known for the dimensions in between, but it's believed that even if this g is, is extremely small, it's Behavior is <laughs> for for two it's explicit. For three it isn't. For for two it's five over uh, four over three I believe. But yeah, yeah. So um, it turns out that that it it's it can be fruitful for for reasons that that are not quite apparent at this point. But I'll say a little bit about that in a second. That it's useful to look at the Laplace transform. Say can look at the Laplace transform, chi, chi of nu, of, um, of this wave, C, C, T. And uh, this explains the choice uh, nu sub C, because now this La Laplace transform is, is finite if nu is, um, uh, if nu is bigger than nu sub C and infinite <coughs> if nu is less than, in fact, less or equal to nu sub C. If you want to understand the asymptotic behavior of, of this uh, function c, sorry, news news a, a real number, not explicit. In general, there's some case, but you know, in general, it's not explicit number. So if you want to understand the sequence c sub t as t goes infinity, uh, it's it's well known that you need to under or that that you can get information about that by understanding the class transform close to the critical point. If you are um, interested in the distribution of the endpoints, say for one of these questions, you may uh, look at a generalization, which is the so-called two-point function, g sub nu of x, which is uh, simply a Laplace transform of walks which go from 0 to x. Bridges and Slade have, an, uh, in recent years, developed some methods to uh, to study this two-point function in the four-dimensional case, which is uh, this critical case. Um, uh, and again, with these um, weak coupling uh, continuous time modifications. So um, what, they can, um, what they can show, so BS is bridges and slate, that in, in D4 and, and G needs to be tiny, Uh, that the critical two-point function decays like x to the minus d minus 2 as x goes to infinity. This is, um, this is the same behavior that, um, that, that's well known for the simple random walk. And uh, if you look at this conjecture, this is not what expected by, uh, for, for the end-to-end for the -end distance. For the end-to-end -end distance, the 
self-floating walk is expected to behave differently than a simple random walk. But you can't see this at this level of this two critical two-point function. I have studied um, uh, what happens if you take nu a little bit away from, from this radius of convergence. And um, we can show that so this is with me and Bridges and Slate, also in preparation on same dimension, same assumption that if you go a little bit above the critical point, then um, this, uh, this, um, this Laplace transform blows up, and um, we can understand how it blows up. And um, in particular, this shows a, a logarithm that has a, a power that's related to the question above. But um, uh, no, this is, uh, no, there's a minus in the exponent. Yeah. So, um, so this is some indication of, of this, but it neither implies the other. So, so let me now briefly, is there a third board behind here? Uh, I, guess, I guess so. So let me briefly say uh, a few words about, Well, uh, this is a well. This is a ratio of two things, right? Um, um, not not quite, not quite. It's uh, close, but not quite. Um, so let let me so let me say a few things about how um, how how to go ab about these questions. So I feel like this is the same quarter. Yeah, it's the same one quarter, but it's, it's not it's not it's it's the same one quarter for a reason that it's two times one eighth divided by two or something. Uh, two times one eighth, or uh, it, it's not. It's not obvious that it's the same. It needs to be the same power. Oh, it's not. No, but it, it turns out it, for heuristic reasons it should be the same power. Um, okay. So maybe I'll um, I use this board then. <laughs> that one. Okay. So let me let me only say. Um, uh, a starting point for this analysis, and that's um, that's an observation by uh, physicists Parisi um, and uh, Sorlas and McCain in 1980, who noticed that if you if you look at a self voiding walks on say a finite set lambda in ZD, uh, that then you there's an exact formula for the two point function. Um, as an integral of a very high dimensional space, c to the lambda, and it's of the form e to the minus a phi um, zero uh, phi x. Oh, sorry, this could be an x. And I haven't said what a is. Um, a, a is a, a differential form. It involves the, the discrete Laplace operator. And then um, it has three terms. Um, let me, I'll, I'll say what tau is in just a second. Oops. Where tau xy is the differential form phi, phi x, phi y bar plus 1 over 2 pi i d phi x wedge d phi bar y. Sorry, it's a little bit small here. So this is a differential form. And if it has even degree. So you can make sense of this exponential by simply expanding it out and multiplying with the wedge product. Um, you obtain a differential form. For the integral, you only consider the top degree part, and then this is an equality. Um, now, um, it's, this is a very high dimensional integral. It's not, not obvious how to analyze it. Um, physicists have, um, well, this is a kind of, in, well, okay, so let, me, let me briefly point out a few things about this integral. First, if you set g equal to zero, you're supposed to recover um, the two-point function of a simple random walk, and you do. In fact, um, with a little bit of imagination, you will be able to see that this is actually a Gaussian integral in the ordinary sense. All that these uh, differentials uh, do is they combine to a determinant, which is a normalization factor of the Gaussian integral. 
So this is a Gaussian integral with covariance, the inverse of minus Laplace operator plus nu, which in the statistical mechanics is known as the free field. Um, it has a, uh, an interesting symmetry, even if g is not zero, which is, which is one between phi and, and d phi normalized by a factor of square root two pi i, which is a form of, of supersymmetry. Um, now, as, as I just uh, mentioned a second ago, it's, it's not obvious how to analyze such integrals. Uh, they are ubiquitous in, in physics, and physicists have developed effective heuristic methods to approach such questions in several cases by uh, renormalization group analysis, mostly uh, uh, particularly due to Wilson. And the basic idea is rather than to evaluate the integral all at once, you only evaluate integral, uh, part of the integral that in some sense corresponds to small distances, and then you increase that distance. And the process of increasing that distance gives a dynamical picture, and um, turns out in some cases you can relate the asymptotic behavior to the behavior of a dynamical system near a fixed point. Uh, now it's not, not easy to make these heuristics uh, precise mathematically. There's some pioneering work by uh, Gavetsky and Kupiainen who, who did this uh, in a case where the differential forms were absent the so-called phi-4 uh, model in, in uh, statistical mechanics. Um, uh, Bridges and Yao have also studied uh, uh, related questions, and um, uh, I should mention that uh, Bridges, Evans, and Embry have studied uh, self-voiding walks on a so-called hierarchical lattice, which is a structure invented by Dyson, uh, which in which this um, analysis becomes easier. I'd be happy to explain more, but my time is up and I should stop. Thank you. Thank you very much.